time can be incredibly intimidating. It doesn't matter if you've been practicing music for years and years and years, or you just happen to pick up a piece of music for the first time. I know it still is for me. However, there are ways to make music a little less scary, and one of those things is learning to read it. So today, I hope to teach you how to read music and the importance of why learning to read music is, is integral to being a music major and also just understanding music in general. So, um, music theory, this is a quote from the Musician's Guide to Theory and Analysis. Jane Piper Clennington and Elizabeth West Marvin discuss the importance of learning music and understanding music theory. They say that music theory provides useful terms and categories, but it does more than that. It also provides a framework for considering how music is put together, what musical elements are in play, when particular styles were prevalent, and why music sounds the way it does. So, this sounds like a bunch of hooey for people that are only music majors, but it actually applies to y'all too. Um, you, when you listen to a piece of music, how many people listen to music, and sometimes it evokes feelings like sadness, and sometimes you notice it evokes feelings like happiness. Can you tell the difference between the two? So that is actually planned. It, when people write music, when they compose it, there's two main scales that are used. Those two scales are called major and minor. The minor scales are written so that two of the notes are lowered by a half step, which I'll explain later on. But that changing of the scale allows for you to get this feeling of sadness when the piece is played. Major is those two notes are raised again, and it evokes feelings of happiness. It's usually played for triumph and marches. Um, so today I'm gonna teach you what notes are, what the staff is, clefs, and then how to put it all together to read. So, notes. Um, in the book of Excellence in Theory by Ryan Nolan and Bruce Pearson, they define a note as a symbol used to represent the duration and pitch of a sound. So uh, the musical alphabet starts with C. Let's see if I can find, there we go, my piano. So the musical alphabet starts with C, all the way down here. And these were the notes that I was talking about. When you have a major scale, you're gonna be raised up to the notes. Black scales, these black keys are each being raised one. Um, in opposition, when you have a minor scale, each note is going to be lowered by a half step. So these two notes happen to be the two notes that are lowered and raised. Each, each um, letter in the alphabet repeats. It starts with C and goes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and then a new octave begins with the same C, only an octave higher. Back. So, yeah, that covers that. Oh, along with that, um, obviously, on the staff, each note, as the note progresses up in the length of the staff, it continuously gets higher. Just like down here, as you start getting higher on the staff, the notes sound higher. All right. So, the grand staff. Nolan and Pearson define a staff as a set of lines and spaces on which music is written. So to put this and this together, when you see a D on your piano, you're going to relate that D to a D on the staff. This staff, there's special ways that people, if you've ever taken piano before, you can learn uh, special acronyms. This one we go by face. And then, um, let's see, there's another one. I can't think of off the top of my head right now. Um, all right, so a clef. There's two clefs. There's actually more than two clefs, but two main clefs that we use, a treble clef and a bass clef. Um, this is a treble clef. This is a bass clef. Clefs are defined by Nolan and Pearson as a symbol at the beginning of the staff that assigns letter names to an individual line or space or staff. So a treble staff is used for all notes above middle C. This would be middle C. Anything higher than that will be on this staff. Anything lower, which is not actually on this slide, will be assigned to the bass clef. Bass clef is usually used by tenors and basses, and treble clef is usually used by sopranos and altos. All right, now let's put everything together 
and figure out how we can read Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So, up here we have our treble clef. So the whole thing is written in the treble clef. And then we see that all of the notes have to be in this treble clef, which means they all have to be above middle C. So, as we're reading along, I'm not going to go through every single note, but you can see as the note gets higher, the, um, the durations, like this duration here, happens to be two notes long, and it happens to be A, D. And then you can go back, and you can say this is on the second line of our treble clef, which means it has to be, oh, it's not written on here, but it would be a G. So that's basically the understanding, the very basics of reading music for you. Today, I hope you learned how to read music and why it's so important, just not to me, but to everyone else too.